So let's go ahead and start um, adding a little bit of precision to this. So you can imagine we're drawing a floor plan or we're taking a sketch and we're trying to recreate it digitally. Um, I'm in a top view, so this is an orthographic uh, projection uh, with a C plane that looks uh, directly normal to the camera. And uh, there's a, a tutorial video on the C plane as well, uh, which explains this concept a little bit more in depth. Uh, but I am basically drawing directly on the grid that you see. So if I run something like a line command and I don't have my ortho snap on, it sort of lets me um, draw this wherever I want. Um, now, if you look down here on the left, uh, bottom left of the screen, this is normally where the units are, but it's actually telling me now the length of this curve. Um, so if you want to approximate, um, you can you know, see this is about a 12 foot curve, or you can actually enter in uh, a dimension. So if I put 12 feet, if I don't hit enter, if I sort of leave it there, um, I can move my mouse around and I know uh, you can see now that that dimension is not changing, it's gonna be a 12 foot curve. If I do something like hold shift, it will snap to uh, ortho as long as my ortho is not um, currently on. And now I have a, a perfect, perfectly um, drawn 12 foot line on the, the x-axis or uh, uh, parallel to the x-axis. If I want to draw another line and I want it to snap to this exact point, all you have to do is make sure your O snaps are on. So if I want it to snap to the end point, I can um, draw or make sure my O snap is end point is on and just um, hover over the end of the curve and it will find um, the end point for me so I know that I'm not overlapping or guessing. Now if I uh, start clicking here, you can see I have my smart track on. So whenever it finds a curve that you're um, drawing against and you have your smart track on, it will show that this is perpendicular, this is on the tangent or parallel to the curve. Um, and you can turn that off if it, um, if it gets annoying, uh, but I like to uh, keep it on most times. So you can run modifiers and other commands on um, this curve. Uh, one is length, so if I run the length command and I click it, uh, just this curve, and I right click to get out of the command, it's going to tell me it's 12 feet. Now I knew that because I drew it, but sometimes you're not drawing this precisely, or you're massing and you need to figure out the length of whatever, um, whatever it is you're drawing. Um, you can also um, edit this curve um, by its control points. So if I select the curve uh, and I um, hover over it, hover over its control points and select it, like I have the gumball on right now, I can just move it. Um, I can use the move command as well. I can also run that for the whole item. So if I need to move it um, from you know a random point to a random point, can also type 12 feet and it will restrict it, its movement uh, 12 feet from that point. Um, I can also click on the object and move it 12, 12 feet, which will basically move it to the other end point. I can also scale this object, so if I select the object or uh, run the scale command, um, this isn't going to matter so much in two um, dimensions, but um, let's run the, the scale command. Uh, it's asking me what object I want to scale, and then it's asking me for the base point. I can also give it uh, uh, an automatic base point, which goes to the centroid of the object or the midpoint of the line. It's asking me for a reference, so I'm just going to click over here, and let's say I wanted that distance from here to here. I know that that is six feet, so if I type six feet in, you can see nothing changes, but if I type let's say 12 feet in, it's going to change uh, the distance from the first reference point to the second reference point to be 12 feet. So if I click this here, now if I get this length, I know this is 24 um, feet total. Let's add another uh, curve into this, actually a few curves. Um, let's say I wanted to create a floor plan for a rectangular building. Well, I know this is 24 feet. I'm going to make this, let's say 48 feet. Just zooming out here. And I can make this 24 feet as well if I wanted to make it a rectangle, or if I have my smart guides on, I can go over towards the other edge and I can move um, my mouse up after I've hovered over where I want it to guide from. And then I can draw on that. These are four separate co uh, curves though, so what I'm gonna do is select all of them and join them. It's telling me four curves have joined into one closed curve. 
Now if I type this, it's going to tell me that the perimeter is 144 feet. I can do a similar thing uh, by using the rectangle command. Um, and it's asking me for the first corner. I'm just going to click here. And now it's asking me for the other corner or the length. So let's type 24. Now you can see that that one dimension, the x dimension, is fixed. I'm going to hit enter. And then I'm going to type 48. And now I have the exact same um, rectangle just drawn two different ways. The last thing we're going to look at here is rotating things. Um, so I can take this whole object and I can use a command called rotate and it's asking me for the center of rotation and whether I want to copy it. I'm going to say no to the copy. It's asking me for my um, first reference point so I'm going to use this on the x-axis and then it's asking me for an angle. Um, I can select this uh, you know, as I want. I can hold shift to get into um, ortho or I can type in a uh, degree um, and it will fix it. Um, I can also uh, type in a negative degree as well. Um, let's explode this object. I can do that for individual um, items. So if I want to rotate this and copy it, I can choose the midpoint, the start, and let's say I want to rotate this 45 degrees. And then um, because I had copy on, now I have two lines. So then you can do something like trim, extend, and you can start to create very precise um, drafting um, files.